Hey, Motion Pro fans, it's Chris V. We're back here in the Motion Pro workshop. Today we're going to talk about the Motion Pro Sync Pro, which is a carburetor synchronization tool that we designed about four years ago. It replaces the old style mercury manometers that we sold for many years and unfortunately mercury is no longer available for sale and so smart guys in our R&D department invented the Sync Pro which uses a special proprietary fluid to indicate the different vacuum levels in the intake system of your motorcycle allowing you to synchronize the carburetors. Very cool tool. There's a couple of special things that you need to know to be able to use it properly. Today we're going to go over all the various parts of the tool and then we're going to synchronize the carburetors on this cool little FDR 400 here so that you can see exactly how it works. Let's take a look at the component parts of the tool. The Sync Pro is a really nice and compact unit and it has four channels to indicate up to four cylinders of intake vacuum. On a six-cylinder bike, you could use this where you would synchronize just four at a time and then synchronize the other two to some that are already synchronized. So it's a very versatile tool. Each channel is completely independent. So if you had just a V-twin with two different carburetors, all you have to do is connect two channels. You don't need to block off the other channels. They're completely independent. The reservoirs down at the bottom of the tool hold the fluid, the Sync Pro fluid, and the fill level is really, really critical part of this tool. Because there is the small airspace between the top of the fluid and the bottom of the calibration screw is what actually allows the fluid to move up and down in response to vacuum on the other side. And so the higher the vacuum, the larger that airspace will expand and the farther the, the fluid will rise in the columns. The, if that airspace is too large, then the vacuum limit of the tool is re reduced. So that's something to keep a really, really close eye on with the tool that you have, is to make sure that that airspace should only be about a quarter of an inch. So uh, we also have the synchronization, or excuse me, the calibration screws are located on top of the chambers. These screws will affect the sensitivity of the tool. So a high vacuum level or a low vacuum level, and it'll also calibrate all four of the columns together. The calibration process is the very first step that you take when you are using the Sync Pro before you actually synchronize your carburetors. There's a calibration manifold that is attached to the side of the tool. This is what you use to calibrate the unit before you calibrate or before you synchronize your carburetors. And we have four hoses for connection to the intake manifolds on your bike. There is already installed in here, there are some small restrictors that smooth out the vacuum pulses so that you get a smooth reading when you are synchronizing your carburetors. So that's what the Sync Pro looks like. And uh, let's actually get to work on the bike. On the bike that you're working on, the layout may be different from what we see here. So take a look at the service manual see what they what they say as far as location of the various components for your bike and and set it up accordingly one super super important point before going through the calibration or the synchronization of your carburetors and this is something that is very important because it's potentially very dangerous make sure that you're always performing this work in a well ventilated area garage with the door open you know a large space don't let yourself get overwhelmed by exhaust fumes. They're very dangerous and so make sure you have plenty of ventilation when you're performing this job. Okay, so we've got the bike taken apart, we've got the tank off of it, some of the body work so that we can access the carburetors and we've got an auxiliary tank. This is another Motion Pro product which is a really cool one to have in your shop for just these sort of procedures. What we're going to do now is there are the intake manifold spigots down here underneath the carburetors, which is where we're going to connect the Sync Pro. The synchronization screws are also located here, very close to the bottom. There's three of them. One between each of the carburetors, which balances those carburetors together, and then one in the center, which balances the two pairs together. That's how you go through the synchronization process. We've already warmed up the bike, which is the first super important step that you want to take when you're synchronizing carburetors. 
the, if the bike is not warmed up, the synchronization will not be accurate. So make sure that your bike is fully warmed up before you connect the Sync Pro and start your synchronization process. Let's go and put the Sync Pro on right now. So the first thing we got to do, and the one thing that's a little bit different about Sync Pro versus some of the older carburetor synchronizers, is we actually have to calibrate the unit so that the channels are all the same and it's set properly for the particular vacuum level of this bike. Now this one, being a 400cc bike, has a little bit lower vacuum than, say, a 1,000cc bike, which has a lot more cylinder volume and will develop a higher vacuum. So between those two motorcycles, you're going to have a different calibration from one to the other. So what we're going to do now is we're going to calibrate the unit. First thing you do, take the calibration manifold and take all of the hoses and connect it to the manifold. Now this is a really important step. If you look in the instructions, the instructions tell you that you have to connect it to the master carburetor or master throttle body. This one is really important because the master throttle body or master carburetor is the non-adjustable one, which will always give you an accurate vacuum reading on how much vacuum you have. If you use it on another cylinder, on an adjustable carburetor, you may calibrate the tool incorrectly. So it's very important to connect it to the master carburetor. Now on this bike, what you want to do is you want to look for the where the cables are connected and, and the carburetor where the cables are directly connected to is the non-adjustable master carburetor. So as we look, and it's the number two carburetor on this one. So we're going to take that, connect the Sync Pro with the calibration manifold directly to number two and leave all the other cylinders plugged for now. Before you start up the bike, there's one last super, super important thing to do. Always make sure that all four of the calibration screws are turned all the way out counterclockwise. That sets the tool for its highest vacuum limit and will avoid having any problems. If you have them screwed all the way down and you turn on a large motorcycle, it's very possible to suck all the fluid out and then the tool has to be refilled before it's functional again. So this is a very, very important step to make sure that those screws are turned all the way out counterclockwise before we start. And they will stop against the body. So don't try to turn them too far because you'll break the tool. All right, we're ready to fire it up. Now, as you can see, we can't see any fluid in here yet. Now that's because this is a relatively low intake vacuum bike. So now we're gonna turn the screws inwards so that now we can see a column there. And we're gonna take each one of those channels and set them all to the same height. There you go. They're all set up. Now we're ready to actually synchronize the carburetors. That's it for the calibration process. So now the bike's off and we're ready to go and connect each one of the individual hoses to each of the individual cylinders. Just something to notice, you'll see a little bit of fluid that gets left behind in the tubes from the calibration process. That won't have any effect on the function or the calibration of the tool, because when we start it back up again, that fluid will rejoin everything else that's there. So this is not anything that you have to be really concerned about. All right, so now we disconnect the calibration manifold. Put it back on the Sync Pro. That way we won't forget it for next time. Now we're going to connect each one of the channels to each of the cylinders on the bike. 
So now we're going to pull off all the rest of the vacuum caps. Put them somewhere safe so you don't lose them because you'll want to put them back on later. Now the easy way to keep track of how you're synchronizing it is to, the cylinders are numbered one through four from left to right. So we do the same thing for the sync probe. So this will be cylinder number one and then four on the right hand side. So we'll take hose number one, connect it to cylinder number one, hose number two, and so forth. Can we all count to four? You'll need to do that if you're going to be synchronizing your carburetor. Okay, so we're all connected, ready to synchronize. Now, the synchronization screws for each of the carburetors are buried kind of deep down underneath the carburetors. So each bike's a little different. Take a look at where they are on, the, on your bike. Now, for this inline four cylinder, is a pretty typical system where you balance carburetor one and carburetor two together, and then you balance carburetor three and four together, and then you balance the two pairs together. So let's do that. Uh, we're ready to fire it up. Let's uh, get it going. Let's see what it looks like. Bike's not bad. It's not too far off. You can see that one and two are not exactly the same. Three and four are pretty close. And one and two and three and four are pretty close. So we basically just have to worry about one and two. I'd say that one and two are looking pretty good. Let's get three and four fixed up a little bit. So, as you can see, we're all pretty even here. Synchronization is looking really good. So, there you go, we're all set. There you go, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Once you understand how this tool works and how it connects to your motorcycle and how to go through the calibration process, the tool is very, very simple and straightforward. The calibration process only takes a moment or two, as you have seen. And, and the tool makes it very easy to get proper synchronization on your carburetors. All we have left to do on this bike now is remove the sync probe, put the vacuum caps back onto the intake manifolds, and put everything back together. Now, there's one habit that's good to get into when you finish using your sync pro and when you're going to put it away for the next time. Always go at the end of the job and turn all the screws all the way back out. That way, you won't forget to do it next time, and you won't have a problem when you're calibrating the tool. So this is a good step to just get into the habit of when you get done using the sync probe. One other one, if you're not going to use it for a really long time, say you just have one bike and you're maybe only going to do carburetor synchronization once a year, would be to remove the hoses and put those small vacuum caps that came with the Sync Pro back on it. Since the fluid is water-based, it can be subject to a little bit of evaporation if you store it somewhere hot and, and it doesn't get used for a long time. If the fluid evaporates, you will have problems because then that airspace that we talked about gets larger and the vacuum limit of the tool is reduced. So that's a nice important step to do when if you're going to store the tool for a long time.
When you pick up the tool next time, just always look at those reservoir air spaces. They should be about a quarter of an inch. If they're any larger than three-eighths of an inch, you're going to need to refill the tool because now its vacuum limit is going to be too low. We'll cover that one in another video, and I think that takes care of it for this time. Thanks a lot for watching, and I uh, hope this was helpful. Have a good day.